couple of things we could do. We could do. Bubba <laughs> Wallace. Let's just, let's just dive right into Bubba it. Bubba Wallace. Okay. So Bubba Wallace, um, for people who are not familiar with this situation, I'll give a quick recap. Yeah, and while you're doing, while you're recapping, I'm gonna go pee. Okay, go, yeah, which go I, uh, rest in peace. I gotta make sure I'm not gonna go puke or something. Yeah, go um, take care of yourself. Um, Sorry. Um, so, whoa, whoa, almost not. Yeah. Um, so Bubba Wallace, he is the only black driver in NASCAR. One of the only, I think he's the only um, black driver in NASCAR, which is. Um, a stock car racing series here in the United States. Um, and NASCAR has been known from its roots to be pretty like redneck. Like the audience, I would say has, um, for, yeah, for lack of a better word, it's pretty redneck. Like the type of people that are very into NASCAR are very, um, traditionally very Southern, very, hell yeah, brother, let's fucking go down, down, or not, you yeah, know, it's like just the, the culture there. Yeah. <coughs> fucking Daga. And, um, I mean, watch the movie Talladega Nights. That's a pretty good, accurate, um, stereotypical representation. Actually, Talladega Nights doesn't have as much like redneck stuff as it just does like white trash type shit. But, um, I, I by the way, Talladega Nights is one of the best movies. Like, that's one of my all-time faves. Help me, Tom Cruise. Help me, Tom Cruise. Help me, Oprah Winifrey. <laughs> um, uh, but anyways, so Bubba Wallace. Um, so so before, let's back up for a second. Uh, last week, NASCAR officially banned the use of flying Confederate flags at any of its events. You can't have a Confederate flag on anything. Um, and I think that was a good move. I mean... Let's be honest, uh, the Confederate flag is something that we should probably not be proudly flying. I get that it's part of history and whatever, but um, A, the Confederacy actually only lasted like five years. It's not like something that's like, oh, Southern heritage, that's my heritage. No, dude, it only lasted like five years. It got retired pretty much for a long time, and then the KKK were actually the ones that brought it back because it's basically like an overt uh, symbol but not really. You can be, you can hide. You can be like, oh, it's not white supremacy. It's me just like talking about states' rights and southern pride. Like, if you actually think that you're, you maybe are one of the small majority, small minority, because a lot of people are flying it because they are uh, trying to show that they basically are racist. Um, but anyways, um, it's one of those things where, like in Germany, they've banned the use of the Nazi flag. I think that's probably a good move, but we live here in America where we have free speech and freedom uh, of expression. So if you want to fly the Confederate flag, you are legally allowed to, but at a private event, like a NASCAR event, you are no longer allowed to fly a Confederate flag. And I think that's the good, I think that's a good move. I think that flying a Confederate flag, like would symbolize to some people that they are not welcome there. And, um, so in the wake of all of this black lives matter stuff and protests, um, that's what their move was. And, uh, this week or earlier last, earlier last week, I can't remember when it was. Um, there was an event at Talladega and Bubba Wallace, who again, who is one of the only black drivers or the only black he driver is, he is the only black driver. And something I wanted to touch in on the I, next I, tell whatever yeah, cup I heard you in the, uh, in the bathroom is, um, NASCAR was, uh, brought out of moonshine runners. Mm, so yeah. back in the prohibition era when alcohol was illegal, the only way that you could transport uh, alcohol, which at the time you could only make homemade private moonshine was done uh, in, in stock cars that had modified engines and, and hiding compartments where they could hide the alcohol. Is that why to, they call them stock cars? Cause they yeah. look like a, like a, cause they look like a regular, regular stock, stock car, car. Yeah. Um, that have souped up engines so you can take back roads and, and, and outrun the police. So, um, NASCAR is always been like an outlaw sport. It's always been for, you know, running. It was founded run, in, in that type of It was of stuff. founded in an illegal activity to run away from the cops. I mean, that'd be the equivalent of like some motor sport being made so that you could transport like weed from state to state you know without yeah. getting caught it's like and some right. sleepers yeah it's like we're gonna take a uh you know like a, a honda minivan and put like a turbo charger and nitrous on it and then like have secret hidden compartments for the illegal weed and then if the cops try to pull you over you just speed off at you know 120 miles an hour or something something crazy like you know that. what i'd but, say if i saw that i go that's a nice car 
That's a nice car right there. Dude, uh, I, have like a, I just realized I have like a pimple in my nose, and I actually touched it in a weird way, and I, a tear just came down my face. You had a pimple in your nose? That's the most painful thing. Yeah. Whenever I shave my nose hair, I always get ingrown nose pimple oh, hairs. They're gosh. the worst. Um, I don't, that's why I don't shave it. I just like trim it. Yeah, but uh, so I tell, uh, they, they, ban the, Ow. they ban the Confederate flag, but someone rented a plane with the flag behind it and flew it over the event anyway. And it said defund NASCAR behind the flag. <laughs> but anyways, the, but that was before, th- that was after what happened. So so they, they, they banned Confederate flag. Then... There was reports that a noose was found in Bubba Wallace's um, garage. Garage, and these garages are not like owned by the drivers; they're owned by the like by the racetrack. By the racetrack, yeah. And and each particular garage is is huge. It's enough for multiple cars and an entire team. Yes, and and it's a private uh, key carded, gated, secured area, and um. And so there, there was reason to believe that it was a NASCAR employee or another driver or an employee of drivers or a pit crew person. Or a team member or something. put and planted a noose in his garage to basically uh, scare him. It was, you know, it, Slash, to say, you're not welcome to here. say, hey, you're not welcome here. You know, I know that you've been outspoken about this whole Confederate flag situation, but fuck you. Um <coughs> And there was a lot of uproar about this. And, um, there, you know... There was, and I was shocked that NASCAR, out of all the sports, to make a statement and then back it up and then unify. I never would have thought it had been NASCAR. Yeah, but it needed like, to happen. Like, hey NBA, hey NFL, where you at? Catch up. I mean, like, but, but, like but, how, but, how is how is a racing series gonna gonna outdo you? Yes, like, but also at the same time, is the NBA known for having people? Overtly flying tons of Confederate flags. No, no. But I guess like, that's why I'm saying it's even more impressive. It's even it is more, very it's impressive. Even more impressive that and, that and Nas- a couple of drivers left saying they like were, I don't reti- like the way that this sport is going. They retired. They're like everybody make everybody wear face masks. But we we can't fly the Confederate flag no more. They're letting black people drive. Like, can you believe this? You know, yeah. it's like wow. Okay. So, anyways, um, they basically had this whole thing where um, right before the race or whatever at Talladega. All of the pit crews and everyone on every team like pushed Bubba's car to the front of the pack, and like everyone stood in solidarity with Bubba. And basically, it was pretty empowering. It was a, it it was was a cool. really empowering thing that happened. And you know, a lot of the leaders from NASCAR were like, "Shame on you, whoever did this." Blah blah blah. Um, and then there was unity. a full investigation 15, that happened. Fifteen FBI agents. FBI. So it wasn't NASCAR investigating only. It was also the FBI came in and investigated. To see if it was a hate crime. To see if it was a hate crime. Because, I mean, there was a noose um, in his stall. And it came out, I think, yesterday or the day before that the FBI said that they fully investigated and this was not a hate crime. And... Then they elaborated. I think NASCAR came out, and basically the thing that happened was the noose in question was really a a, a rope to pull down the garage door. It was a garage door pull, and, and in the stall, and it hit. It was fashioned to look like a noose because someone just wanted a circle loop and just tied a knot at the top of it. Well, there's, there hasn't been like detailed pictures of the noose yet. My brother sent me one thing, so I don't know how uh, uh, substantiated this is, but it's something that, but this was the, the apparently the, the noose that isn't. And I don't know how noose that looks pretty noose. Like see the, the wound up coil at the top. And, And here's the thing. I was in boy scouts. You were in Boy Scouts. We get, we learned to tie knots and stuff. Yeah. I don't know if I would have chosen a noose to do that. Because it slides. But I remember in Boy Scouts, like, tying nooses because we were learning how to tie things. And you're like, yeah, and if you wrap it a bunch more times, that's how you would hang someone or whatever. Mm-hmm. And obviously, nooses have are very, like, in the United States, very racially tied because of lynchings and, you know, literally public hangings but that, of black but people. But that knot has a utility. But the util- that knot has that utility. But, but it's not that utility. No, it's not that utility. It's not, and, it's and not, the it's other not thing... If you, if, you're to, if you were to pull on it, it would slide. The whole point of the noose is that the, the, the knot slides. And also, 
A lot of people tie nooses to hang themselves. Like it's also like a suicide yeah. thing. Yeah. So here, here's here's my, I, I guess let's finish the story and then I'll get, we can give our opinions on it. Yeah. But apparently it was the only garage pull in all of the stalls that was tied like that. Garage, all of the garage, other ones. Garage four. Yeah. Out of all the garages. And, and it was the only one that was tied like a noose. And make no mistake, it was tied like a noose. Like everyone is saying, it wasn't just like a, a little knot. It was tied like a noose, no matter how small or whatever. And so I think some people saw it as a signal. But the thing that they realized was that that actually had been there since October, since as early as October 2019, because they found images and videos from that stall where the noose was clearly shown in other instances with other drivers in that stall. Yeah. So the noose has been there for a long time. It was, whether it was a, a, a basically like a coincidence that happened at like the, the height and peak of like if if this if this like civil unrest wasn't happening right now, no one would have ever even noticed it. But the fact that we're in the middle of all this mess, I bet like some crew member that showed up there very early in the morning, like the very first day, was like, oh, "Someone put a noose in our stall." Literally, you know, and like, I and don't, it wasn't Bubba that found it; it yeah, was a crew member. It was some crew member, and like, I'm sure that probably anyone who's worked in a garage like that who understands how the poles work would have looked at that. Like, I, I can't believe it took 15 agents for them to look at that and go, I mean, well, that's no, what no, that's no. for, I think though. they knew it was a garage pull. I think they thought someone probably went in and deliberately tied it like a noose to send a signal to it. Uh, I don't think I anyone, like, I don't think there was, like, I'm going to tie a noose and throw it in there or something. I thought that's what it was at first. I thought it was, like, someone made a noose and also, that noose is not functional. It, it was attached to a garage door. So, first of all, if you pulled it, it would pull down the garage door. Second of all, that rope was really thin. Like, it wouldn't have held up someone. But, but you, it's but, not but the but traditional that, that, type of rope. But that rope. knot has symbolism behind exactly, it. Exactly, and that knot has symbolism behind it. And again, it was like kind of a coincidence that um, it was in Bubba's thing. Now, the thing is, a lot of people are saying it's like the Jussie... Uh, the Juicy Smoulie situation. I can't even say his name right now because of Dave Chappelle. Juicy Jesse Smollett, I think, is the real way to say it. But Are people really comparing it to two? They really? have been. There was on Twitter, it was trending. Je Bubba Smoulie. Jesse Smoulier. is like Sm a, Jesse Bubba Smollett. Like, like a dead ass from the beginning, highly planned out, highly fabricated. I know, but he, you're dealing with, he, with stupid he people. He paid bro. off people to intentionally like attack him that they found and they confessed that they're like, hey, yeah. You're dealing with people who are still wanting to fly the Confederate flag. Yeah, okay. Like, the people that are really mad about this are also the people that are also mad about not being able to fly the Confederate My flag. My favorite argument I saw, and so back in KC, I've got a friend who still races uh, dirt track modifieds, which is one of the ways that you get into NASCARs. If you get really good in that yeah. series, you, you, you go up. Um, and and he was having a comment in, in the comment section where he was asking, he's like, yo, so what's this, what's that? And one of the most ignorant comments I saw, he goes, I'm so sick and tired of everyone talking about racism. You know, the best way to get rid of racism is you just don't talk about it. Don't talk about it anymore. Just leave it alone. Why does everyone have to keep bringing it up? And I'm like, that's the most ignorant, dumb, racist thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, it, it's funny because I've actually heard this argument a lot, and a lot of people point to this Morgan Freeman quote where someone in an interview asked Morgan Freeman about how we can stop racism. He's like, we need to stop talking about it. That was actually what his answer was. But really, his his the point was like, why do we have a Black History Month? We don't, we don't, do you want a black, do you want a white history month? Oh, no, you don't? Oh, okay. Yeah. So why do we have a black history? Like we're singling out this stuff because we're, is like affirmative action type thing. Like we don't need affirmative action. We just need people to like not be fucking racist. And while I can kind of get behind the idea of like, yo, the way that we right now, like all the racial tension is like, it feels so high right now is because everyone's talking about it. But the reasons why we're talking about it is because we're exposing all of the fucking racists. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like we're just fabricating and nothing. And I mean, problems, I can understand, yeah. like, yeah, fabricating this whole news story. I could see how NASCAR wants to fabricate some story so they can push their woke agenda. They're trying to move the sport forward. And like, it, 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 I get how you could come to that conclusion. But again, that's that's people going, okay, let's look. What's this organization? What is Black Lives Matter doing? Who's funding it? Blah, 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 blah. Nah, dude, we need to zoom all the way back and look at history and look at the fact that, like you said, 
what is NASCAR founded in? It was founded in this old time where uh, at the time, you know, it was based in Prohibition era. Guess what was also happening in Prohibition era? Fucking Jim Crow laws and stuff where black people were still segregated and weren't allowed to use the same uh, water fountain. You don't think any of that has still trickled its way into the sport? Uh... I'd be hard pressed to, to to say no. I mean, oh, a lot not, of it I'm, has. I'm not disagreeing. No, no, I, I'm I'm more disagreeing with. I, I'm I'm furthering your argument about like I think that some people are like, yo, we need to just stop fucking talking about this, dude. If we stop talking about it, it'll go away and things will go back to normal. And it's like, dude, the reason why things aren't are feel like they're uprooted and things like that is because we're finally exposing what's been happening for so long, mm-hmm. and by not talking about it, we are just going to. Uh, sweep it back under the rug, which is not um, cool. Which is which we we cannot let that happen because um, we're only going to experience these types of issues more, and it's just going to bubble up back again. I mean, we're seeing the same stuff that happened in the Rodney King riots. We're seeing the same thing that happened um, when MLK was assassinated. We're seeing all of these same things. History Trayvon repeating Martin, itself. Michael Brown. And until we make like actual changes, nothing's going to fucking change. Brianna Taylor, George Floyd. And, and, and uh, I, it's funny that you mentioned that. Cause I actually had like something like that written in my notes earlier about BLM. And it was basically like, should we be hiding the racist and pretending like it doesn't exist? Or should we be highlighting them to shame them and show how ugly we really are as a society? And I think that's where it, it makes sense. Like we need to be highlighting these people because we need to show, we like we need to show that there is another side of this we've been highlighting uh so many other things like we've been uh highlighting in the media for years and years and years and portraying people that are not white as the criminals and as the perpetrators of all this stuff and we need to fucking expose these racist ass white people for once bro well also the institutions i mean if you look at the 13th yeah. amendment there's an amendment inside of the amendment that says except for when they're criminals and then you look at the amount of the prison population what is it the u.s is responsible for 30 40 percent of the entire world's I think it's prison 25% population of the world and over 80 percent of that is black males i'm not gonna give any stats because i don't know if i'm off the top of my head they're it's huge not, it's, it's not 80 but it's a lot maybe it's 40 (laughs) percent 40 and 40 80 and 40 are very different let's not throw out numbers but um yeah i'm I'm not for uh, (laughs) i'm not informed on the statistics specifics but i will say that we know they're huge (laughs) but (laughs) we know (laughs) but but yeah and that's a whole nother issue with um incarceration and all that stuff agreed but yeah like it is kind of funny this idea of like guys the way that we solve this shit is we just stop talking about it well, it's just such it's a like there's, terrible there, there's argument. a part of it that I agree on, right? So I saw this post by uh, someone, and like I agreed, except for it was with, for the wrong reasons. It was like if you're looking for all the negative things in your life, all you're gonna see is the negative. That's true. You know, if you're constantly, you know, gossiping and focusing about this and talking about that, then you're gonna have a bad, sad, negative life. Hundred like, percent. If you're no, always looking for someone to be the aggressor, you're always gonna be the victim. Yeah, and then it's like, and then it went, and it's like. You know, 99% of police officers are fine, but the, you're just focusing on the few. And 99% of people aren't racist. You're just focusing on the fu- on the few. And it was like, 99% ah. of priests don't molest little boys. It's only the 1% that fucking twiddle little boys. But yeah, it was this whole thing. And then when they get fired, they actually don't get fired. They just switch them around to another church. Another parish, yeah, just move them around. It's the same fucking shit. No, we need to expose the organization. You don't, yeah. you don't fucking, you're not born being a cop. It's you a shirt. choose it. It's literally a shirt. So when you fucking choose to be a cop, you better fucking hold your organization accountable. And I understand that there's so many different precincts. There's literally hundreds of thousands of and precincts so all around the complex, United States. And it's so entrenched in politics and it's so corrupt, And it's not a fucking easy job, dude. So, I don't want to be a cop. Yeah. But the thing is I don't want to be a cop the same way I don't want to be the president. Like, no. Well, it's it's literally you're a public servant. That's what the that's what a politician is supposed to be. Don't is call a public me a servant. servant. I'm a powerhouse. I'm not. Nah, I dude, can do like, whatever I want. No, whenever bro. I like want. we pay your fucking taxes. Like we pay your fucking salary. You know, like that's. But it gets so withdrawn because, again, a police officer is just a person, but they're given so much power that that uh, it's very easy to abuse that that power. <coughs> uh, there was some thing that me, came. Yeah. There was something that came out recently where they caught some. Cops in North Carolina talking on the radio about how they were ready to go kill some N words, literally. Yeah. Well, like, also, you guys remember bro. remember that video that came out of New York City cops running over those 
crowd of protesters. Like the crowd of protesters like put a fence up against the bumper and then they just rammed it. Yeah, yeah. They, like the radio, like TMZ caught the over the air and it was like, hey man, we're going to get stuck if we go around this corner, man. They're going to trap us. I don't know, pull out your gun and shoot a few of these motherfuckers. And be like, yeah, I don't know, run them over. And, and then uh, one of the goes, don't, don't say that over the air. Yeah. He didn't say, don't say that. I he heard didn't say, that don't I, do that. He said, yeah. don't say it over the air. Yeah. There was another instance like that. that yeah, it, it was, it's not good. But so, um, what, what? I posted a, I posted a clip from, from the last podcast on my Facebook, actually, last week. Got yeah. a lot of attention. Yeah, I saw that. I was a part of it. And I think you, like, had edited some things around it to be, like, more precise in the conversation. I edited a lot of it. Because yeah. there were certain things that I was like, this is not going to be concise enough for Facebook. And out of context, might not make a lot of sense. I cut it down to, like, five minutes, basically. <laughs> but I, I got some good dialogue there. A lot of people seemed to enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed that clip. If you'd like to see the full episode, click right here. If you'd like to subscribe, click here. If you'd like more clips, we got two more right over here.